All right. So for this morning's or this afternoon, depending on when you're doing this, History Social Studies lesson, we are studying the song America the Beautiful, which is an American tradition. You may have or may not have heard the song. I figured I would play it here for us. That way um, we all get to listen to it, and I hope you'll sing along with me. For spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed His grace on thee and crown thy good will. From sea to shining sea. Have you heard that song before? I know I have. And if you haven't, that's okay. That's why I played it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video on my end so that I can sh get all the materials shown inside the camera and then we can get started on our assignment. Ta-da! Okay, so here is... All the, here are all the things you're going to need. Going to need your journal that is for social studies and science. Um, a set of crayons, glue, pencil, scissors, the pages from our lesson scans. So now I'm going to pause my video again and you should pause me as well so that you can go gather the supplies. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my journal to the next available page and I'm going to get my pages set up so that I can draw my force field so that I am ready to create my book. Okay, see you in a moment. Ta-da, back. Okay, so you need a crayon in order to make a force field with me. So the first line, um, we're actually gonna make this a little easier. We're gonna take this paper, I'm gonna turn it over, see how I'm looking at the back, and now I'm gonna carefully fold it in half. And I'm gonna make sure that my two pages are set nice and neatly folded you can see that there and you know what I don't even think we're gonna to need to make a force field I'm gonna keep doing that I'm gonna fold each of these papers in half this paper actually has the dotted line that I can use I'm gonna to try to make it nice and neat there we go that off to the side this one does not have a dotted, well, it has a little bit of a dotted line, so I just need to be careful. Let's check this side. Uh oh, Mrs. Smith did not fold very well on that one. Okay, there we go. You can see, got both. All right, now we're going to fold this one. Okay, so if you're still folding, you might want to pause me. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut on each of these folds very carefully to separate each of these pages. So you should pause me now so that you can catch up to where I am. And I'm going to magically have them all cut in about one second. Done. Okay. So make sure that your pages are in number order. You can see the little page number at the bottom. That's how I did that all the way from the title page to page seven. Now, you'll notice that my pages do not fit on my book like this, so I'm going to turn my book so that my metal part is at the top, then I'm going to place these down like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with page 7, we're going to turn it over, and we're going to glue it flat. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, looks like I need to add a little bit more over here. I'm going to add a sorry guys. I'm going to add a glue line here as a spine and number six gets put there. Another glue line. Can you guess what comes next? Number five, glue, four, 
Blue. Three. Blue. Two. Blue. page. Perfect. Okay. Next step, please write your name and take a moment to color in your title page. When I turn back on my video, I will have my title page colored in as well. And we're colored. So I hope you have as well. If you need to, you can pause me now so that you can work on that. You can even use an example of what I did. And now I'm going to turn, uh oh, mine came unglued. Well, I'm not gonna cry about it, I'm just gonna fix it. Perfect, okay. So here, what I'd like you to try to do is I'd like you to try to read this on your own. But before you do that, we should probably highlight some words that might be difficult. So one of those is this word. Please highlight it in yellow. This is the word symbols. 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 And then highlight in orange this word. Country. 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 So symbols are smaller items, pictures um, that represent something larger. So for instance, a symbol of boy. You know what? This is a good example. So this is Mackenzie's pacifier. This is a symbol of a baby. And it's a lot smaller than she is, and it's not exactly a baby, but it is a symbol that we have a baby in our home and that this is her pacifier. So these are symbols of the United States of America. So we have our flag with our 50 states. I don't know if you know what this guy is, but we're, we're going to find out. Do you know what kind of bird this is? Do you know who she is? Who lives here? And what holiday do we celebrate with these? So you can take a second to color those in if you wish. Um, I'd like you to try to read these, these sentences and then you pause me so you can read them. And then um, in just about a moment, I'm gonna start reading them. So you hopefully you've tried on your own. Okay. There are many symbols for my country. Come along and see. Okay. The blank. Mmm. Okay. So we're going to do yellow again for this word. It's the same word as the first page. The word symbol. And we're going to do orange again for this word. The word country. Okay. So this is one of the symbols. So let's read it and let's try to fill in the blanks. The blank is a symbol of our country. It has three colors too. They are blank, blank, and blank. Do you know the answers? What is the answer to this riddle? Have a pencil ready. First of all, what is the symbol? Did you guess the flag? You're correct. What are the three colors of our flag? Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? If you're struggling to spell these words and you want to do it before you check it for mine, your name tag will have these words. It has three colors too. They are red, white, and blue. All right. So now what I'm going to do is draw.
Do you know why there are 50 stars on the flag? There are 50 stars on the flag because there are 50 states in our country. And each, each state is represented by a star. All right, let's keep going. The blank blank is a, uh-oh, let's highlight that word. Do you remember what this word is by now? It's the word symbol. It's a symbol of strength and loyalty. Many live in the blank knighted, blank tates of America, just like you and me. So this is a symbol of strength and loyalty. I'll give you a hint, it's a bird. It's this bird. He is a bald eagle. Funny fun fact, the bald eagle is not bald. He just has a white feathers on the top of his head, and so we, we like to call him bald, but he's not. Okay. Do we live in the knighted, the knighted Tates of America, guys? No. What are we missing? United. Notice the capital. States. Notice the capital. America. Notice the capital. Okay. So... see if Mrs. Smith's drawing is going to go well today. Did you know that bald eagles live in many, many states? Have you ever seen a bald eagle? I have seen bald eagles in California on the way north. I have seen bald eagles, um, oh, I'm sorry, those were in the mountains and in the forest. And I have also seen bald eagles in the swamps of Florida. They can be found all over the United States. There we go, got a nice bald eagle. Okay, let's keep going. All right, the blank, blank, was a, oh, there's that word again, symbol of freedom. And all the people sang, but it cracked down the middle the very first time it blank, it ang. Hmm, well, I'll tell you, this is a certain type of bell. Notice the capital. This is called the Liberty Bell. This is a giant bell. It is, is twice the size of people. And you can still see it. It's located in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, in the city of Philadelphia. You can go visit it. Um, it's behind glass, but it's in a museum, and um, it's outside actually in a park. And when you go there, you can't touch it anymore, you used to be able to, but you can at least see it, and it really does have a giant crack right down the middle. And the story is that it cracked down the middle the very first time it rang. Do I know if that's true or not? It's one of those folk tales, but it could certainly have happened. All right, now let's draw in the Liberty Bell. I think what I'll do now, this one's going to take me a moment, is I'm going to pause it, and then when you come back, you'll see a complete Liberty Bell. So you should maybe pause me now, too, so you can draw your own. And there's my Liberty Bell. Make sure you draw in the crack. All right, let's keep going. The blank, blank, blank is a, say this word, 
symbol of hope and prosperity. It stands in Ework Arbor, as tall as can be. So here she is. Do you know what she is? Have you ever been there? You used to be able to climb up to her crown. Can't do that anymore. You used to be able to climb up actually in her, most of her body. Now you can just stay at the bottom. She is huge, much, much bigger, um, a huge, huge symbol of hope and prosperity. So she is in, she is in New Capital, York Capital, Harbor Capital. So Harbor is where boats go. And um, she is in the water there on an island and they called Liberty Island. And they put her there so that she would be one of the first things that people saw when they traveled on a boat to come to America. And they would stop in New York and the first, one of the first things they'd see is the Statue of Liberty. And so when they saw it, they felt very hopeful that they would be prosperous in their new country. So those immigrants came here, probably people from your family, um, or at least uh, people that you know. I definitely know people from my family. And when they, to this day, when people who come to America to live here, they see the Statue of Liberty. They believe that they have a chance to live a great, wonderful American life. All right. So we're going to start with, she is called the Statue, capital, of, does not have to be capital, Liberty. Notice the capital. She is the Statue of Liberty. She also stands for freedom, which we know is the word liberty. It means freedom. Okay. So I'm going to pause mine. You should pause yours so that you can draw yourself the Statue of Liberty. Okay. You're probably wondering why she's green. She's green because in real life she is green. So what happened was she was created out of metal. And then when she had been in the ocean on this, in the ocean air and in the water, it turned the metal green. So it reminds me a little bit of the Golden Gate Bridge, which is actually what color? It's red. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit changed, but it, it just shows you the power of water and the power of chemicals. Okay, so let's keep going. The blank blank is a, well, there it is again. You guys are going to know this word by the end of this lesson. Symbol of our U.S. resident. Is it a U.S. resident? No. President. He works here for our, oh, there's that word again. Do you remember this one from page one and page two? Country by the people he sent. Okay, so um, this is the place where the U.S. president lives and works. I'll give you a hint. We call it a house. It's a pretty grand house, capital. What color is that house? It's white, capital. The White House is located in Washington, D.C. It is located on Pennsylvania Avenue. It is not the first White House. The first White House was actually burned down. They rebuilt it because that's what we do. We rebuild things. We don't let them just be destroyed. Not every president has lived in the White House. In fact, George Washington did not. The White House has tours that you can take and you can see all the famous rooms. Many of the famous rooms in the White House are named after famous presidents like Abraham Lincoln. The White House is particularly spectacular because of its columns. And whenever I see a house with columns, I think to myself, that house reminds me of the White House. There we go. All right, maybe I'll just do a little flag coloring in. Okay. 
Do you know who our current president is? Yes, his name is President Donald Trump. When, um, uh, when November rolls around, we are going to have an, another election, and that's where we as the American people get the honor to vote in a president. And um, when, when I think about the fact that I get to vote in a president, I realized how blessed I am to live in a country like this one, where I get to vote that person in instead of it being just someone that they allow in or that they put in office. It's someone that I can say, yes, this is someone that I believe will be um, a good person to run our country. And no matter what, we always pray and hope that that person makes the right choices for us here in the United States. Last page. The, oh, I see the number four. The, do you know what holiday has these fireworks in July? Well, it's in July. Notice the capital is a, oh, there it is. A freedom and a very special date. It's America's Earth Day. It's America's birthday. Notice the capital. And a day we celebrate. So this is the fourth, don't forget to trace in the number four, of July. And that's the one that has lots and lots of fireworks. So why don't we take a second to draw on some of these fireworks. Do you like going to the 4th of July parties? Have you ever seen the fireworks here in Benicia at the torchlight parade? Do you like to watch fireworks in other places? I'm curious if we've ever seen each other at the fireworks. Well, next year in July, hopefully I can take Mackenzie and I'll see you guys there and we can watch the fireworks together. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'll see you soon and I hope you've enjoyed our study of America the Beautiful. Oh, one more thing. I couldn't help it. I went back and I colored in all the beginning pictures too. So I hope you got a chance to do that. Okay, bye-bye for real now.